paid a severe price because my legs were how they were because of my uniform. My uniform was too heavy. It was 40 plus pounds. We had it on 10 or 15 minutes before we even walked out and then put on that helmet. That was extra weight. And then the ring walk, then going up the stairs. It was like a real workout for my legs. When I took it off, I knew immediately the game has changed. How bad does this look for Wilder? He, he's serious here. Max Kellerman, Molly, I'm very fond of Deontay Wilder. I've spoken to him on several occasions, you know, away from the boxing arena, whatever. I really, really like him. So I hope that he accepts what I'm about to say in the spirit that it's given. <coughs> this might be the most embarrassing excuse that I've ever heard for a guy losing the fight. I am not questioning its validity, Max. I'm not saying that it may not be true. I'm not questioning it. He's an honorable dude. I will take him at his word. But my God, this is just not something you publicize. The outfit that you wore to the ring, wearing over 40 pounds, is why you think you lost this fight? What the hell you wear it to the ring for? According to the reports, you tried it on the night before. You knew how much it weighed at that particular moment in time. Why would you do that? Why would you go, I understand it's Black History Month and all of that, you know, honor everybody by going in the ring and winning. Not by going in the ring with an outfit on, for crying out loud. That ain't what wins you fights, okay? So why, and if you're going to wear something, wear the same thing you always wore, as opposed to something this different, experimenting in the biggest fight of your career. That's number two, Max. Number three, he just got beat up. He got beat up. Now, I give him credit. I didn't see. I thought his legs were going in the first round. He says by the round, at the round two, my legs were going. I thought it was going in the first round. He just looked out of it. No question. But to publicize this excuse, it's nothing short of embarrassing. And then we're hearing, Max, you want to get rid of Mark Breland as your trainer because, you know, you're hearing that he was listening to some fight in the crowd and all this. Stuff. Deontay Wilder, I don't know if anybody's told you this. I thought the fight should have been stopped two rounds earlier. I thought they could have stopped it in the fifth. I thought they could have stopped it in the sixth. I what it do, what it do is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. Listen, man, shout out to my audience. Shout out to those that's rocking with me. And yeah, we back in the kitchen. And there's a whole lot of goddamn sauce in this pot, man. Let's get to the shit. Listen, I'm not through with you motherfuckers yet. I will never be through. Um, I will continuously apply pressure. I will continuously uh, speak what the fuck I feel. Uh, at this point, I'm an outlaw. Um, nah, I'm not even an outlaw. I'm just who I am, bro. I'm just who I am. Um, I really don't got nothing against nobody. Um, but I just don't. Listen, I just think what I think. Just like you motherfuckers think what you think and feel what you feel. I feel what the fuck I feel. And I will explain that. But the title of this video will be Deontay Wilder is the reason why I don't trust nobody in boxing. Not nobody. 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 Anyway. Um, yeah, that's how I feel, bro. Um, and, and you know what's crazy I didn't plan on doing this video But I have been planning on doing a Wilder video I'm like damn I ain't did a video about Wilder in a while And I fucks with him And um So I was like damn I ain't did a video in a while So I, I you know I was listening to, uh, to a video About Pharaoh uh, Pharaoh he's a real intelligent brother But anyway I didn't know he talked about the Fury Glove Gate and this and that I ended up stumbling across it And so I didn't realize how many uh, celebrities and different uh, social media people who not even in boxing that was talking about it. I knew it was a big thing, but I didn't know Pharaoh talked about it. So that's how I came across. And I was like, man, let me talk about this shit. Because I remember. Yeah, I was on the Internet a little bit. I was casually on it. But I remember it was a big stir. It was it was the biggest shit ever that Fury cheated. And oh boy, it was by it was by it was man. It was a lot of black channels, uh, b boxing channels that was reporting on this shit every day, every single day. You motherfuckers was dedicated. Uh, yeah, you motherfuckers was 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 ready for a goddamn civil war or some shit. But anyway, looking back on that, bro, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um. It just reminds me of who we are and what we are and how we are. Listen, um, I just want to know where you motherfuckers at. Um, 
all you motherfuckers that say you really rock with why why ain't seen no wilder videos then why ain't seen no wilder video and all you motherfuckers that said fury wasn't shit and he's a cheat listen bro uh most of you motherfuckers uh react to his fights when he fought Derek just so most of you motherfuckers made a reaction video most of you motherfuckers made reaction videos when he fought sorry soft ass dylan white so um black folks don't even fuck with connor being after popping dirty don't fuck with him and it's come back that yeah um he he innocent and it was some shit that was gave to him and he's not basically he was wrongfully done he was done wrongfully black fans don't give a fuck about that we not finna even talk about connor being no more unless we talking about him being a cheat so i'm just showing how we so unforgiving we don't forget we ain't forgive jarell miller after popping we don't fuck with him we don't fuck with ours when they fuck up let me tell you something bro um if, if black men was the judge in every courtroom boy we would all get life without parole because that's how harsh you motherfuckers is with each other jarell miller can't even black fans don't fuck with him we don't fuck with connor uh connor ben so you know oh fury popped dirty before um a lot of shit he's, he's known for doing drugs at this point there's no need to prove that he cheat because we all know that and even if we don't think he didn't cheat, we know he's a dirty motherfucker. We know he on drugs. We know he tested positive for steroids. So to test positive for steroids, that alone lets me know that you ain't good as you thought you was. When you when you pop for steroids and all this shit there, that lets me know you looking for advantage. So that alone is proof that fear will do what he got to do to win. So I can't call you the greatest ever or none of that shit there when you need performance enhancement drugs. That's for one. Uh, the man, um, uh, the motherfucking farmer said he came, a white boy came out and said the man, uh, uh, the fear was lying about the, uh, about the bull nuts and shit like that. And a lot of shit because he, he said he ate bull, uh, bull meat, like, like Canelo said. So it's been proven. Nicholas Asbury, uh, said fear was hitting him without the padding in the glove. He was already practicing on punching without padding in the gloves and shit like that. Uh, we saw his uh, gloves flopping all over the ring. So all that there has been proven. And whether you believe he's a cheat or not, uh, the fact that it's people who saying he's really a cheat, but we allow fear back in boxing. Now, nah, let me tell you what you motherfuckers did. Um, I heard you, bro. Uh, all you motherfuckers. Didn't nobody want fear banned from boxing. Nobody wanted that. We just wanted the third fight. Remember that shit? Now, nah, even though he could have killed Wilder, and now, now he just going to fairly get it back in the ring. Remember that shit? I just want you motherfuckers to remember what you said. You wanted Wilder to fairly get him a first shot in the third fight and just get his retaliation in the ring. Listen, bro, if we was like that in life, bro, there would need there would be no black on black crime. Yeah, if we were just fur and shit like that in these streets, bro, we there would be no black on black crime. Picture this, bro. You on the block, you hustling, and he hustling, and he sends some homies at you because you making more money than him and shoot up your house. Uh, your kids are in there, your baby mama, all that shit. So let's just say your homies tell you, uh, nah, bro, we ain't gonna, cause, cause normally we go back and shoot his mama house up, not his house. We shoot his mama house up or his grandma house up and kill everybody in the house. That's what we normally do. But let's just say your homies came to you and said, nah, bro, don't, don't shoot back at him. Even though he, he went to the guns, he went to some shit way past hustling because he couldn't make more money than you. He went to the gun, but we ain't gonna go to that. We ain't gonna fight dirty with dirty. No, we gonna fairly just out hustle him. I ain't never heard no shit like that. No, we don't never say no, let's fairly just out hustle. We ain't gonna shoot back. No, that's what black people, we that's what we do retaliate against each other. So all that first shit, bro, listen, when I know you a cheater, bro, I can't even trust, I can't trust my fighter in the ring with you because when you look at the third fight, Fear was punching the same way as soon as he hit Wilder, Wilder drop. So this out of nowhere power, and like I said before, I'm going to say it again, Wilder switched trainers and promoters. He went to Sugar Hill and Bob, a known crook, the promoter from way back in the 70s that can get all kind of shit done. That's when he started punching like that when he got Bob. And when he got Sugar Hill. And you know, Sugar Hill can't find a fight ever since. And another thing, everybody shitted on Wilder for firing Mark Breland. You know, the, you, know the, you know the sad thing about everything has been exposed. It don't take, time will reveal. You're like Elder Boys. In time it will reveal. But anyway, uh, Mark Breland, um, what fighter do Mark Breland got right now? 
Everybody said Wilder was wrong for firing him. What fighter do he got right now? Anybody fucking with him? Or any offers? Nothing. Want to know why, bro? Because everybody in boxing know, bro. It's like the dope guy. And you know who tell him, bro. Everybody know he cheated, bro. But didn't nobody speak up. What black fighter spoke up? Who spoke up? Because look at when Devin fought Loma Ching. How many black fighters said Loma was robbed? And Devin didn't have no shit in his gloves. But them same fighters would never in their life admit. And, and they know fear. They'll never admit it, bro. We'd rather take up for a motherfucker fairly losing than a motherfucker who was cheated and could have lost his fucking life. You know, we, we we seem to forget that. That's like, listen, this ain't no different from a motherfucker trying to get at my homies in the street and damn that took his life. We, we, we never forgive that in these streets. We never forgive that as black men. We never forgive it. Most of you motherfuckers don't even fuck with your brother because you jealous of him. Most of you motherfuckers got cousins you don't even fuck with. So what I'm saying is this. If we was just as fair as we was with Fury and we fairly let him come back in this country, nobody threw a tomato at his car, nobody slapped the shit out of him, nobody ran up on him, none of that there. Everybody got autographed, black folks showed him the utmost respect. All I'm saying is if we was like that towards each other, there would be no motherfucking black on black crime, bro. Listen, bro. Um, the main reason why I'm talking about this shit because, like I said, I see with the Spence versus Crawford shit. Listen, I'm excited about the fight, um, and all that. There, but like I said, it, you listen, motherfuckers got more respect for Fury than you motherfuckers got for Terrence Crawford. You motherfuckers got how can you have more respect for a fucking Fury than um than Earl Spence? Because reason why I say this, nobody, listen, bro. Bobby Brown, no matter how good his life get, bro, he will always be reminded that you was a dope fiend, bro. Nobody, no, no reporter, no fans, no other fighters call Fury a dope fiend. Because when a white boy do it, he can wipe, wipe his slate clean and we don't remind him of that. But we're going to always remind each other. So that's why I said, bro, we just monkeys. You motherfuckers just monkeys. So, and that's why, that's what disgusts me. That's why I just stay, I just stay in my own lane, bro. I don't even get on this shit. Because every time I look up, it's a, Terrence Crawford said this. Man, Terrence Crawford lying. Terrence Crawford said Earl ain't got nothing for him. Earl exposed his Terrence Crawford. Who, how can you get exposed, bro, when they both signed the fight? So what I'm saying is all the war that you motherfuckers got in your heart towards Spence versus Crawford, bro, they ain't no cheat. They ain't gonna put no shit in their gloves to try to harm another man. You motherfuckers ain't never pop dirty, bro. And you motherfuckers don't respect Bud and Spence, but you can respect Fatback Fury. So that's all I'm saying. That's what I see in boxing. And like I said, um, no matter how much... At this point, bro, if Fury come out and say, I cheated, bro, and both black fans would still fuck with him, they'll say, so, so what? So like I said, at this point, um, it just coward behavior. It just coward behavior. And like I said, bro... um. If it was two black fighters or, or if it was Devin and Tank and a motherfucker said uh, Devin won and knocked Tank down three, four times and found out Devin had some shit in his glove, bro, you motherfuckers would get at him in a physical way. In a physical way. You know, because we cowards, bro, and we only got smoke for each other. So at this point, it don't matter what Bud do. It don't matter what Spence do as men. You motherfuckers still going to disrespect him. You still going to shit on it. You motherfuckers just turn this shit into some all general hospital shit. That's how you motherfuckers are. No matter how much these motherfuckers gonna sign for the fight, no matter how much they tell you, you dumbass fan, look, we respect each other. I respect Bud. I respect man. You motherfuckers still gonna try to find some mess to try to. You can't expose Terrence Croft. You can't expose Earl Spence, bro. You can't expose them, bro. They don't do dope. The motherfuckers don't do dope. And you motherfuckers can keep reminding Spence, oh, he was drunk, and that's why he had the car wreck. You motherfuckers are pathetic. This man caught flip 30 goddamn times he could have lost his motherfucking life. But because you a Terrence Crawford fan, you motherfuckers wished harm on him and blame him talking about he was drunk. Motherfuckers ain't shit and that's why I don't fuck with you motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck about none of you and most of you motherfuckers ain't even worth living. A, a lot of you motherfuckers are a waste of fresh uh, air. A lot of you motherfuckers are just in the way. And you motherfuckers just live. But like I said, bro, most of you motherfuckers that spoke up when Wilder was cheated, that shit was a trend, bro. Most of you motherfuckers got tens and twenties and thirty thousand subscribers off that shit. That shit was just a little vibe. So time will reveal just like the Elder Boy song. And in time, I ain't heard nothing else about Fury or Cheat. 
Because when, like I say, when a black fighter, he get reminded every time he fight, the announcers uh, bring it up. Y'all don't never bring it up no more. So his slate wiped clean. I just wish you, you, ig you ranger tank, you long arm motherfucker. I just wish you motherfuckers wipe Spence and Bud slate clean. All them years of them talking about he ducking, bro. He fighting them now, bro. I wish you wipe this fucking slate clean. I'm just, it's just the monkeyness and it just show how cowardly we are as a people. It just show that just who we are as a people. And I will forever. Listen, I can talk so much about the system and what they do. You motherfuckers owe us reparations. You motherfuckers ain't gave a shit. You gave it to the Indians. You gave it to the Japs. You gave it to the Jews. But we have yet to get anything and we was in slavery alone. I can talk all that shit. But at the end of the day, black men are, are, are at this point in life, we are the greatest danger to each other that we've ever been. We are danger to ourselves. We are danger to our woman. We are danger to our fucking kids. Over Juneteenth Halloween, uh, uh, over the over the Juneteenth holiday, bro, it was over seventy five motherfuckers got shot in Chicago. Two or three kids got killed riding on a bicycle, bro. We're a danger to our fucking children. So, at this point, bro, I just don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you motherfuckers don't want to stand on this shit. But at this point, bro, self hate within the heart of black men is just a poison, bro. It's just poisonous, bro. And you motherfuckers act like bros. And if you can't gossip and be messy, you can't talk about the fight. So I just don't give a fuck about you motherfuckers. And I don't respect you. I don't respect you, bro. It ain't but a few of you motherfuckers that's just that I feel is genuine. Most of you motherfuckers are playing on the internet. I wish you motherfuckers find a white boy that did. Find somebody else, bro. Find somebody else, bro. Spencer Crawford are proven. So most of you motherfuckers just hate us, bro, and you just look in the mirror and you hate your motherfucking self. This is 903 Boxing. I am your host, George Jack. With that, I'm out.